Hi, I'm Morris Hayes. I'm the keyboard player and music director for Prince. I've always been around music since I was small. We had a piano at the house. So the piano was there, and my mom would practice on it, and so we'd kind of bang on it. One of the things I like about the piano is it's, it's a very expressive instrument. When you want it to be quiet, it can be quiet. When you want it to be dynamic, it can be dynamic. So you're able to just get so much nuance and so much uh, feeling from it. My interest as a kid was more in the sports. The music was kind of like, yeah, 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 I can go and peck on the keyboard when I feel like it, you know. What happened is I started playing in church a little bit, and, you know, at church, you know, you play a little bit and it sounds terrible, and everybody's like, yeah, it's okay, baby, that's just, ooh, that's so nice. And so that's kind of what set it all off. When I got to university, I was an art major, and the art department and music department were in the same building. On my way to my art class, I'd peep in the window, and it was cool because every room had something going on, so I'd stop and listen to, you know, this guy maybe doing something, to be a sax player and piano player, and maybe doing something, and talking to these guys, you know, someone like, you know, we should put together this little, uh, like, college band kind of thing. And so, uh, I had to really hustle to, you know, to kind of stay on point with those guys because they meant business. They, some of those guys, you know, out playing with the big artists now, and that started that whole process of just playing and then just continually just working to improve and that sort of thing. In 1982, Prince came to my uh, hometown. I remember being, you know, 50 rows back or something that was way in the back. And uh, I, I remember seeing the time come on and I was like, wow, look at those guys. Man, they nailed, they were killing. I said, I'm gonna play with those guys. They're great. And then Prince came on. I said, dang, that dude's great too. I'm gonna play with that dude too. And I actually did that. I actually said it. And I played with both of those guys in that order. This is a ticket from December 17th, 1982, of that show that I went to. One of the things I have always loved about Prince is that he recalibrates on the spot. Sometimes things don't flow in certain crowds and certain audiences, you know, so we have to be ready to go with him. So with my old rig, I used to have this crazy setup that had 16 or 17 keyboards in it running OMS and an uh, absolute wiring and MIDI nightmare. You know, expensive mixers and, and, and wires for days. If any of that stuff got discombobulated, it was mayhem. I had to perform every religious rite before I would go on the stage. Like, you know, I had to do the, everything over the gear to hope that it worked, you know? And now I don't do that. With the Ivory II upright pianos, the workflow is very simple. You gotta launch the program, it comes up, it's ready to rock. Thank you, good night. And so that makes workflow so much easier because now I just, you know, arm a channel and it just whips up and then I just drop it into whatever I'm working with. What I like about Ivory Two Uprights is the ability for me to be flexible and be able to choose a lot of different sounds and different pianos and just be able to you know, choose the one that works right with the piece of music that I'm working on. When I first installed it and started going through the sounds, something was nuanced to it that made you say, okay, this is inspiring for this. I can use this for this, I can use this for that. And it just was cool just to go through the sounds and then just like, just let it take you where you want to go and then just see what works where.
One of the great things about Ivory Two Upright Pianos is how they recorded it. You know, trying to record pianos, you have to have a good front end, and then there's the space that the piano is going to be recorded in. All of those things play into the characteristics of the sound. And I think Synthogy nailed it on the head. This thing is so convincing. I mean, it's amazing because it just reminds me of when I was playing at the different halls and the different churches, all of those different pianos that I've used over the years. I'm able to capture all of that. What I gain now is more control. I'm able to get what I need to get, like, instantly, and I'm still able to get all of the quality that I'm used to. Since I've been using Ivory Two uprights, I'm starting to actually now create music, just using the plug and just putting it everywhere that I can put it. There's so many different styles that you can approach it from, you know, from hip hop to just like some jazz type of stuff, just some blues stuff. I'm really like digging it for the blues thing. It's just like it's got that old flavor on it. And when you put that with that little upright thing and get your little trap set, it's just crazy. Can the Ivory Two upright piano be funky? Well, I would have to say it's as funky as whoever's gonna be handling it. The parameters in Ivory Two really allow me to specifically tailor sound to my piece. I can really go in and change the timbre of it, change the coloration of it a bit, add a certain like reverb or anything like that. Maybe I want a little more creek sound, maybe I want a little more of this. I'm able to do anything I can think about. It's so great to take something in your head that you can just think about or you're dreaming about, and then you come in here and you take something intangible and you make it tangible. It's cool, and if you have plugins that will allow you to be creative as opposed to being technical, and just sit down and create music. It's nuts what you can do now.